Diwadi. Afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hmm. Okay, uh, we will uh, continue that uh, practicing the objective questions based on that respiration that day we have done few, and today we will be doing rest of the question. <clears throat> okay. So here there is. Okay, so, so this question is, we have done the day before, I think this question number up to 14, huh? we did. But the pyruvate dehydrogenase is used to convert pyruvate to Acetyl coenzyme A. Next question is the question number here. This one is question number 15. Okay. The intermediate compound common for aerobic and anaerobic respiration. This was asked in Kerala PMT 2004. The water, what is the common compound? that between the aerobic and anaerobic respiration. This is aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Glycolysis is the, glycolysis is common, is it? Common phase in the aerobic and anaerobic. So the end product of glycolysis is the common compound. The intermediate compound common for aerobic and anaerobic will be the end product of glycolysis. So here, here it will be pyruvic acid. Okay. This will be, it will be py, uh, pyruvic acid. All right. Pyruvic acid is the end product of glycolysis. Citric acid, this is produced in the, uh, in the Krebs cycle, acetyl coenzyme A after the pyruvic acid, if it is to enter the Krebs cycle, then the acetyl coenzyme A is produced. Of course, uh, this one is uh, outside the Krebs cycle and then succinic acid is also within the Krebs cycle. So our answer is pyruvic acid. Okay. Next question. This is question number 16. The common phase between aerobic and anaerobic respiration is called this is glycolysis that common easy to easy to answer now the net gain of atp molecule in glycolysis the net gain of atp how many atp is produced in the glycolysis answer answer it here options are 0, 2, 4, 8. What is the net gain of ATP molecule? Yes. Answer is? 
Tell me the answer. Say uh, here uh, we know in the glycolysis what happened? Initially, two ATP molecules are two ATP consumed. Is it? And four ATP are formed. ATP formed. Four. So it is two consumed. Four ATP form. No, it is the net gain. How much we are getting? We have already invested four ATP. This is consumed. This uh, this one is production is four ATP. So our net gain is gain is two. four minus two is equal to two ATP. Is it? Here, our net gain will be 2 ATP. Say, in some cases, sometime it is that in the glycolysis, 8 ATP equivalent. Sometime it is written that 8 ATP equivalent energy is produced. But what happened exactly is Glycolysis, we don't know whether it is, whether it is in the aerobic respiration or it is in the anaerobic respiration. If anaerobic respiration, then that NADH2 that is consumed in the glycolysis, we get two NADH2 also. Is it two molecule of NADH2? But this NADH2, if after glycolysis it is anaerobic, then this will be consumed. So net production will remain two. If it is in the aerobic pathway, then this NADH2 will be oxidized. This NADH2 will be oxidized in the that uh, in the electron transport system, in the terminal oxidation, and this will produce four ATP. Then it will be two plus four, six, is it? But uh, this option is not there. Here we have to consider this one, that two net gain, of ATP is two. Next question. This is the question number. This one is 17. This is 18 number question. How many ATP molecules are obtained from fermentation of one molecule of glucose? From the fermentation of one molecule of glucose, how many ATP are produced? Two. The same, it is the two ATP molecule. Yes, good. So this is the answer. Two ATP molecules are the net gain of in fermentation because after fermentation, this only two net gain that this NADH2 or NADH2 will be consumed. So ultimately, two ATP. Question number 19. Name the enzyme that convert pyruvic acid to ethyl alcohol. Pyruvic acid to ethyl alcohol. Pyruvic acid, the fermentation, you remember that pyruvic acid, pyruvic acid is first converted into acetaldehyde in fermentation, alcoholic fermentation, and acetaldehyde then converted into ethyl alcohol.
Uh, okay. And in this case, here, particularly from the pyruvic acid is first decarboxylated that it produce a carbon dioxide molecule and in presence of enzyme is here, the enzyme is, sorry, enzyme is pyruvate decarboxylase. Pyruvate decarboxylate, decarboxylase, okay, L-A-S-E. And here, here the enzyme is alcohol dehydrogenase. The enzyme is alcohol dehydrogenase. This is a dehydrogenase enzyme. Okay. And it forms the ethyl alcohol. So here op options are A, carboxylase, B, phosphatase, not the phosphatase is nowhere it is used. Dehydrogenase is also there, but from the carbo pyruvic acid to ethyl alcohol, there are two steps and catalyzed by two enzymes. So it is a decarboxylase is there, dehydrogenase is there. Here carboxylase and dehydrogenase is there. So, but both the enzymes are used. So our answer will be this one, not the, not this, not this. This is incomplete, okay? If we tick A and C, this will be incomplete. So our option is D, carboxylase enzyme and dehydrogenase enzyme decarboxylase and dehydrogenase. Next, question number 20. Organism used in industrial production of ethanol. Which organism is used for the production of ethanol? Saccharomyces. Yes, Saccharomyces. Saccharomyces, this is the yeast. Okay, this one is yeast. Next. Next question is 21 number. Yeast poison themselves to death when alcohol concentration reaches in alcoholic fermentation. Actually, see, if yeast is Yeast is allowed to ferment a sugar solution. No? Sugar solution, they will get their food, the energy, and alcohol will be released in that solution. So gradually, the concentration of alcohol will increase. But the continuously, it cannot go indefinite. Okay, what happened that when the gradually the alcohol concentration increases, it becomes poisonous to the organism. So in that alcohol 
uh, containing solution, it uh, cannot survive. And uh, you know that alcohol is uh, fixative also, it kills cells and tissues. So this, uh, when it is about 13%, okay, beyond this, that it become poisonous to the yeast itself. And that's why by uh, when the, the sugar solution is used to produce those alcoholic drinks, then its concentration cannot increase more than 13. Because all, all the yeast will die and ultimately the process of fermentation will stop. Before reaching the 13% concentration, also the growth of the normal activity of the yeast gradually decreases. So it is 13%. TCA cycle is the name after it. TCA cycle means, you remember that it is Krebs cycle. Is it? It is citric acid cycle. This year cycle is also known as citric acid cycle and TCA cycle. TCA stand for what? TCA stand for tricarboxylic acid. Tricarboxylic acid. So it is named after Hans Krebs. Okay. So this is Hans Krebs. That's why it is named as Krebs cycle. Emden is for Emden. Emden, uh, yes, Emden for glycolysis. Melvin, Calvin, they gave that Calvin cycle and Robert immersion is uh, there is in photosynthesis, there is immersion effect. No. So those, uh, next question. Most of the enzyme of TCA cycle are present in cytoplasm, intermembrane space of mitochondria, mitochondrial matrix, inner membrane of mitochondria. See, Krebs cycle or TCA cycle that takes place, site of the Krebs cycle is, site of Krebs cycle or TCA cycle is, Cycle is a mitochondrial matrix. Chondrial matrix. Is it? So naturally the all the enzyme will be present there. Glycolysis enzymes are present in the cytosol and the, those which is the electron transport system or electron transport chain that is in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. This one is the answer that the mitochondrial matrix. Twenty-four. Acetyl coenzyme produced from pyruvate by what is that process called? The process is what is the process that pyruvate this is changed to acetyl coenzyme A 
and the process is known as oxidative decarboxylation oxidative decarboxylation because in this pyruvate change into acetyl coenzyme a by the process of oxidation but a removal of hydrogen and also decarboxylation removal of carbon dioxide also takes place here so first molecule of carbon dioxide is released here and here in a dh2 is also produced now so that oxidation and decarboxylation so it is oxidative decarboxylation is the answer next is 25 See, these are the questions that ask in some of the exam. Which statement is wrong for Krebs cycle? See the statements. There is the one point in the cycle where FAD is reduced to FADH two. In the Krebs cycle, FADH two is produced. That is true. FADH2 is produced this is during conversion of succinyl coenzyme A to succinic acid a molecule of GTP is synthesized this is also true okay this cycle starts with condensation of acetyl group with pyruvic acid this uh, process acetyl coenzyme a here pyruvic acid what is the beginning this acetyl coenzyme a combined with oxaloacetic acid is it and it produces citric acid this is the beginning of the krebs cycle is it so this condensation this reaction is also known as condensation reaction and it is a enzyme also condense enzyme so this is a but here it is written cycle start with condensation of acetyl group that is acetyl coenzyme with pyruvic acid not with pyruvic acid there is condensation with oxaloacetic acid so this portion is wrong statement here it is wrong so this one wrong statement is this one so c is the right option where the statement is wrong there are three points in the cycle where nadp is reduced to nadph2 is it true nadp is reduced to nadph2 in the krebs cycle there is three places remember that three places where nadph2 is produced see here this is the krebs cycle one place is here this is the one place nadh2 is produced this is another place where nadh2 is produced and this is another place where nadh2 is produced and one nadh2 is produced here during the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl coenzyme a 
but within the Krebs cycle, this one is the Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle is not this one. So in the Krebs cycle, three places are there to produce NADH2 and one place where FADH2 is produced, one place where GTP is produced. Is that? So these all are correct. Now next is 26 number. Okay, this question was asked in NEET 2017, all right? So these are very, very important question. 26, so which metaboli metabolite is common in respiratory mediated breakdown of fat, carbohydrate, and protein? Which is common? Same. No, no, no. Common respiratory mediated which metabolite? Metabolites are that which is produced in the metabolic pathway. The compound produced in the metabolic pathway. Say, the one which start the one which is oxidized that is substrate is it this one is substrate substrate is carbohydrate fat protein organic acid these are the respiratory substrate when this substrate react and give rise to certain compound catalyzed by some enzyme that makes the metabolic product. Product and Say like uh, glucose, a starting material is glucose and it end with carbon dioxide and water. But in between, there are many compounds are produced because uh, this uh, glucose to uh, carbon dioxide and water, this is a chain of reactions and in between many compounds are produced okay so these are called intermediate metabolite all right intermediate metabolite so here it is asking the question is which metabolite is common in respiratory mediated breakdown of fat, carbohydrate and protein. See these three compound, no? three uh, respiratory substrate, their breakdown procedure, the reaction, etc. are different. But at some places, all are oxidized in the uh, uh, in Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle is common for all of them. But before that, the different compound produces different things. Fat is broken down, fatty acid and glycerol. The uh, proteins, they break into that amino acids, etc. Okay, so after that, it is, it is oxidized into Krebs cycle and energy is released. So this thing, you have to see that which one is common. 
which compound here it is given acetyl coenzyme a glucose 6 phosphate fructose 1 6 biphosphate and pyruvic acid so this one let us let us see the uh, main process uh, process where the three compound that uh, three substrate Okay, I'll show you from here. Okay, let's see this one here. You can understand the process. See, see here this chart. Okay, in this, this fat, fat is metabolite, uh, respiratory substrate, carbohydrate, protein. They, we have, uh, we usually learn about the carbohydrate, how the carbohydrate is oxidized. So the whatever the uh, type of carbohydrate, uh, this is changed into simple sugar, glucose. Glucose move in the glycolytic pathway and it forms the pyruvic acid. Okay, glucose for the pyruvic acid, then pyruvic acid to acetyl coenzyme A, and then enter the Krebs cycle. This protein, when protein is the respiratory substrate, protein first broken down into amino acid. It is the digested protein after digestion form amino acid. Amino acid is absorbed and it is sent to the cells, okay? Cells and there it is oxidized. But this amino acid, it is converted into pyruvic acid. So pyruvic acid is common for carbohydrate and protein. But what happened when fat is used as a, as a respiratory substrate, fat is converted into fatty acid and glycerol. The glycerol is converted into, in this uh, pathway, glycerol is in between. In the, it enter into the glycolytic pathway. See here, glycerol dehyde, et cetera, is there, no? Glycerol dehyde, glycer glyceric acid, mm, phosphoglyceric acid, etc. is there. So glycerol enter in this position. Dihydroxyacetone glycerol dehyde three phosphate at this position in the so glycerol enter into the glycolytic pathway. But the fatty acid, this fatty acid is converted into acetyl coenzyme A. Fatty acid is converted into acetyl coenzyme A. So for all the three respiratory substrate, common compound is acetyl coenzyme A. And after acetyl coenzyme A, it will enter into the Krebs cycle. So fat enter into the respiratory pathway in the form of glycerol and acetyl coenzyme A. But protein as a pyruvic acid and this carbohydrate is beginning with the that uh, glycolytic pathway. So our answer will be that acetyl coenzyme A is the
common intermediate metabolite. Okay. The common intermediate metabolite is common. So common intermediate metabolite is acetyl coenzyme A. Next is <clears throat> question number seven. Which of the steps in Krebs cycle indicate substrate level phosphorylation? This is Kerala 2011. Substrate level phosphorylation. <clears throat> Say phosphorylation is in the respiration, two types of phosphorylation. Phosphorylation means here simply you understand that is ATP formation. ATP synthesis, that is equivalent to phosphorylation. Okay. <clears throat> This phosphorylation is two type. One is substrate level. Level phosphorylation and another one is oxidative. <clears throat> phosphorylation. And in case of photosynthesis, there is photophosphorylation. <clears throat> photophosphorylation in photosynthesis. And <clears throat> in case of respiration, there is two type. One is substrate level. This is oxidative. This substrate level is sometimes it is also known as the direct production of ATP. This is a direct method. Okay, here what happened when there is chemical reaction taking place in that process, whatever the energy is released, that energy is directly utilized for the synthesis of ATP. This is called the substrate level. And in oxidative phosphorylation, what happened? First, the, uh, the oxidation of the substrate takes place and in that the reduced coenzyme NADH2 and FADH2, that uh, reduced coenzymes are produced and then this reduced coenzymes are oxidized. They are oxidized, oxidized to produce that NAD and FAD. And this energy which is released, that energy is during this process, during the process of oxidation of reduced coenzyme. During this process, ATP is synthesized. So in here you see in the uh, in Krebs cycle, This is showing the Krebs cycle in detail. Okay, so what is happening here? This is a process from the cytic acid to oxalosuccinic acid. During this process, NADH2 is produced. Here is again, from alpha ketoglutaric acid to succinyl coenzyme A, NADH2 is produced. During here, 
succinic acid to fumaric acid fadh2 is produced and again from malic acid to oxaloacetic uh, oxaloacetic acid NADH, nadh2 is produced these are not to the substrate level here during the conversion of acetyl coenzyme a or uh, uh, sorry succinyl coenzyme a to succinic acid gtp is produced directly okay here directly gtp is produced during this place Here, this is succinic acid, succinyl coenzyme A, and here succinic acid. Here, GTP is produced, and then GTP from the GTP, ATP is produced. So, which represent the substrate level? Phosphorylation is uh, uh, represented by the conversion of succinyl coenzyme A to succinic acid. During this reaction, that the GTP is produced directly. So this is a substrate level conversion. Twenty-eight. In the electron transport system present in the inner mitochondrial membrane, complex one and four are respectively. Which one represent complex one and four? I think I told before that the electron carrier, they are organized into a functional unit and those are called the complexes. So complexes one to five are there. Complex one to complex five. Complex one to four is the electron carrier but complex five is where this ATP is synthesized. So you can see uh, this. Here is there here is this electron this inner membrane this blue portion is the inner membrane inner mitochondrial membrane and in those the complex one complex one is made of say this is the complex one NADH dehydrogenase. Complex one is NADH dehydrogenase. And complex four is here. Complex four is cytochrome oxidase. This one, cytochrome oxidase. Complex two is succinate dehydrogenase. And complex three, complex two, Complex three is cytochrome BC1. So you have to remember all these, then you can answer. So here, which one? So first is NADH dehydrogenase, and the fourth is cytochrome oxidase. The cytochrome oxidase is also known as cytochrome A and the cytochrome A3. Cytochrome A and cytochrome A3 together 
forms to the cytochrome oxidase. So one is cytochrome NADH dehydrogenase and fourth is cytochrome oxidase. So like this way, you will remember the complex two, complex three, complex five. Okay, next is 29 question. A small protein attached to outer mitochondrial membrane, which act as mobile carrier for transfer of electron between complex three and four. So again, complex three and four, which, which a small protein is there. See here, this is complex three complex three, green one, and complex four is this reddish pinkish one, all right, complex four. And in between these two, there is a mobile protein, electron carrier, this is cytochrome C. That is from complex three, electron pass to complex four through cytochrome C. This one is mobile. This is not fixed. So our answer will be cytochrome C. The chemiosmotic coupling hypothesis of oxidative phosphorylation proposes that adenosine triphosphate is formed because ATP is formed due to what? A proton gradient is formed across the inner membrane. Across inner membrane, a, for the chemiosmotic hypothesis, okay? For chemiosmotic theory, the for ATP synthesis, there should be a gradient of proton. Gradient of proton means on one side, proton concentration should be very high and on the other side, concentration will be low. So there is a gradient. And say this is the inner membrane, say this is a matrix, and this side is, this is the outer membrane. Outer membrane of mitochondria, this is inner membrane of mitochondria, and this one is matrix. So gradient is formed between this across the inner membrane. So when concentration is very high, this proton will try to move towards the matrix because this side concentration is very less. And this one is possible only that through the F0, F1 particle, is it? When the, this is a channel, this is a passage by which the proton can move from this intermembrane space to the matrix. So a proton gra gradient is formed across the inner mitochondria. There is change in permeability, not all this. So this is very, very important. Next question is chemiosmotic theory of ATP synthesis in chloroplast and mitochondria is based on this Phosphorylation, ATP production takes place 
in both in mitochondria as well as in chloroplast but the process of formation of atp is same under the uh, guided by the same principle it follows the same principle and so what is that based on proton gradient okay here written the proton gradient accumulation of potassium accumulation of sodium membrane potential no here it is the chemiosynthetic theory of atp synthesis in chloroplast and mitochondria is based on proton gradient this is uh, this was the question asked in 2005 cbsc ipmt next is question number 31 in cellular respiration the final acceptor of molecules of proton is who accept the proton say this uh, all the reduced coenzyme reduced coenzyme release there reduced coenzyme release electron and proton okay and this electron and protons are ultimately accepted by oxygen okay the oxygen atom except two electron get negatively charged and then it can combine with two proton okay so this one when combine with two proton then it form water and it is called metabolic water so this is so here it is oxygen oxygen is the ultimate acceptor of electron oxygen is the ultimate acceptor of proton or hydrogen acceptor finally next question oxidative phosphorylation referred to anaerobic production of atp cyclic acid cycle production of atp production of atp by chemosmosis okay chemi this is c is the answer that production of atp by chemosmosis this is the oxidative phosphorylation okay Thirty-three cytochrome oxidase contains what? All the cytochrome, all the cytochrome they contain a atom of iron, and due to presence of iron only they can um, transfer or they can carry electron. okay so cy all the cytochrome they contain iron they are the iron containing protein but this cytochrome oxidase particularly cytochrome a3 cytochrome a3 it contain iron as well as copper copper also has a double valency is it 2 plus and copper plus okay iron has 3 plus and 2 plus that is valence 3 and 2 so this is uh, this one is a special cytochrome oxidase a3 is little special than the other cytochromes and due to presence of copper only it can transfer the electron to the oxygen 
copper iron directly cannot transfer the electron to the oxygen it first iron atoms of cytochrome a3 pass the electron to the copper and then copper pass the electron to the oxygen so this cytochrome oxidase contain both copper and iron the energy equivalent of nadh is which of the following number of atp molecule this nadh this reduced coenzyme they release when it is oxidized they release energy and this energy is trapped to synthesize atp so one molecule of nadh is equivalent to 3 atp molecule right here our option answer b 3 in anaerobic in aerobic respiration total number of atp molecule formed from one one glucose molecule is this was question question asked in aims 2012 and west bengal joint entrance exam 2009 this is from one molecule of glucose in its complete oxidation this is aerobic it has been told so how many it is 36 atp are produced respiratory quotient of glucose glucose is 1 okay carbohydrate for carbohydrate it is 1 Question of glucose. Here it is given glucose is carbohydrate. So for for carbohydrate, it is one. For protein, it is zero point nine. For fat, it is zero point seven. Okay. this organic acid if it is organic acid it is greater than 1 so in carbohydrate it is this is known as rq okay respiratory quotient for carbohydrate it is 1 for protein and fat it is less than 1 protein and fat less than 1 organic acid is greater than 1 okay but i will stop here today you can practice from your practice book